Hello everybody, this is David coming at you with another video. This is another or the second part of a VGA project that was Pong Part 1 I posted. And here's Pong Part 2, the complete game. I finally got it tweaked and got it to where I wanted it. And so I'm going to go through and explain what I did and then go through the Verilog code and actually show you it working on the screen using the basis 3. So here's the block diagram for it. There's a lot going on here, I know, but just the red line is all the clock. So these are all the modules. Um, we got the two buttons, the up and down for controlling the paddle. Um, the state machine is, is it's not a separate module. It's instantiated, all the logic for it's instantiated within the top. So that's why it looks like this. But these are all separate modules. <clears throat> and then essentially we just have so we have the VGA controller that has X and Y values to go into. We're going to generate text in one circuit and we're going to generate uh, graphics in another circuit. And then those RGB values will be multiplexed and the selection for it will be generated from within the top based on the state machine. Um, but that's going to drive to the VGA connector, of course, async and vsync just to keep the clutter down. I just put this little symbol here so the signal picks up there. Um, so we're going to have a counter that is going to be used for the score. And so that is going to communicate with the graphics generated circuit. And then that also communicates with the state machine. And um, the, so the graphics generator communicates with as well. The text generator does. The ASCII ROM that I created is going to we're going to use those values for the text generation and then there's going to be a, a, a timer which is used for two seconds for uh, resetting the ball um, and for the game over state at the end before being able to start a new game so the state machine is going to essentially have four different states for four different states of the game and i'll show you that in the code Okay, so here I am in Vivado. Uh, this is a basis three project, target language Verilog. You can see the module hierarchy over here on the left. And um, so I have a top, of course I have the VGA controller, that text unit, which the ASCII unit is feeding into it, um, the graphic unit, the timer, and the counter. And let me go through the modules here. This is the VGA controller that I've used on every VGA video since I created it. And I'm not going to go through it. Here's the ASCII ROM that um, I created that I did a text generation video on. Um, same thing, nothing's changed. Um, here's that 100 counter. This is for um, incrementing the score. So we have digit zero and digit one of the score. We can essentially score from zero to 99. Um, also to clear the score whenever we um, start a new game. Here's the signal. So just register control here and the logic down here for um, changing the digit values. Here's the, uh, the timer is essentially a two second timer. When, like I said, when the game's over, and resetting the ball so it creates a so it takes in a timer start from the state machine essentially and a timer tick that is also created in the state or in the top module along with the state machine and then outputting the timer up signal letting the state machine know that hey that the time has passed you can move on to the next state <clears throat> so here's the graphic unit so pretty much the same in pong as pong part one except i added you have to add this signal here for still graphics so because we have different states and so when you're on the main the beginning screen the new game screen those are still graphics and then the game over state is uh is also still graphics um and then a graphics on signal to let the state machine know that we're in the you know graphics are on we're in the graphic state and then also the hit and miss for the ball hitting the paddle or missing so we know to increment the counter or decrement the counter and then the rgb value for the graphics 
Um, it's pretty much the same, like I said, as part one. I, I added some more walls. Originally, there was just a wall to the left. I added a top wall and a bottom wall. That's because of the, the new screen I got is shifted vertically by 32 pixels up. And so I shifted everything down from the top. Um, 32 pixels so you'll see the score and then the ball count and then I actually have like three walls cornering off where you actually play uh, pong in so that's why I have three walls here's the 60 second refresh tick that happens every start of the the v-sync period <clears throat> um, all this is the same from part one just the the paddle but I I did add this value here so that I could start the paddle in the center of the screen. So take 480 by half, you get 240. Half of the pix uh, the paddle height is 36. So 240 minus 36 gives us the top position of the paddle, puts us in the um, center of the screen. This is how fast you move the paddle. You can change this to make it go faster or slower. And then here's where um, same stuff we did for the ball. So the ball size and then all the, the boundaries for left, top, um, registers, buffers, the delta registers for changing the position and also the ball's velocity. So if you want the ball to move faster, you would put, you would increment these values here. If you want it to go a little slower, well, the only slower you can go is one. Um, and so we're going to access a ball ROM. So we have a ROM address, a ROM address, a column, and then the actual data coming from the ball ROM, which is down here, I'll show you in a second, and the ROM bit, which is going to be read from the ROM. It's going to be 0 or 1. 1, we're going to turn it on in the shape of the ball. Um, register control here, resetting. Here's the paddle, um, and then the delta registers, the ball X and Y. And then here's that ball ROM right here. So when that ROM bit is going to generate when we want to turn the ball on for the graphics. All the object signals for left wall, top wall, bottom wall, the paddle, the the square ball, and the ball on. So we're going to use the square ball and the round bit to generate a round ball, which will be the ball on signal. Um, all the wires here for the RGB values, which I assign here. So you'll see how I have the color scheme for Pong. If you want to change the colors, then you would change the colors in a couple of places um, and in the graphics. You'll change it here. There's also colors for text and then um, color inside the Pong top as well. But here's the signals for left wall, top wall, and bottom wall um, based on the parameters for each of those. Here's for the paddle, um, changing the paddle. Or actually, this is just creating all the boundaries for the paddle and then that status signal when we're within the boundaries of the paddle. And then here's how it's controlled. So button one is going to be used to move it down and button zero is going to be used to move it up. Well, button zero is going to be button U on the basis three and this will be button D on the basis three. Um, here's, okay, the boundaries for the ROM, the square ball, and then we'll have a square ball on signal when we're within those ROM boundaries. And then we'll use all this stuff here to create the ROM address, the ROM column, and then reading the ROM bit. And now, so now the ROM ball is on when we have square ball on, but then we also have the ROM bit as it's reading through the ROM. And then here's the, how we position the new ball. So um, still, if we have still graphics, then we're gonna check um, so x max divided by two and then on the refresh tick we'll update it with the uh, the delta register for x and delta register for y um, and then here's how we register the collisions for the hit and miss so um, when we're still so in the beginning of the game you'll see the ball is just held still in the middle so it's not going to be moving so we're going to have, so this essentially just puts the ball in the center of the screen for still graphics. And so if we have still graphics, then um, we're, we're not going to change our delta registers, um, but it's not, the ball's still not going to move. But then now the ball's moving, we're in the game, and so we're going to check if, we're going to check it for a collision with the bottom wall, the top wall, the right wall, and then a paddle. 
and then a collision with the paddle. And if it doesn't collide, if it does collide with the paddle, we're going to get a hit. We're going to register a hit. And then else, um, if we get to X max, which means the ball missed the paddle and hit the right side of the screen, then we're going to register a miss. And this is um, the graph on signal that's going out uh, into the top for the state machine. Um, it's just any wall the paddle or the ball those are the the graphics the signals from this module and then i just here's the rgb multiplexing so based on uh, left wall top wall and bottom wall we'll just use the wall color which i have for blue and then the paddle color the ball color and then the background which are all which were all set up um, towards the top of the code as i showed you a little a little bit ago let's go to pong text so we have the ball count right here so you can have zero you're going to start with three balls and if you miss three then well the game's over your digit zero and one for your score the text on signal which i'll concatenate some signals i'll show you for for that so it's basically be a one hot signal for the state machine um all the signal decor uh declarations here so we're going to use um four different text situations or three so um yeah, actually four. We're going to have four. So so everyone, we're going to have a ROM address. And then so in the, within the ROM address, we're going to concatenate a character address and a row address. Well, each character address is going to be based on the state of the game. We're going to have, um, well, or actually the, where the text goes. The score, the logo, the, uh, the rules. We're going to have some rules and then game over. And then that row address also has for the score so we'll concatenate these for the ROM address and then also a bit address for each one the ASCII word so the eight bits that's come from the the ASCII ROM um, the ASCII bit for the ROM um, score on logo on rule on uh, game over on um, and then rule ROM address now uh, here's where I instantiate the ASCII ROM and so now here we're section off. So here's the score region. We're going to display a two-digit score and the ball number in the top left. We're going to scale that text to a 16 by 32 size. And it's going to be, it's going to look like this. So these are the digits, 0, 0 through 99 and your ball count. Um, and so this is all the logic for this. And essentially reading from the ASCII ROM in this section of the... Of the screen I pushed it all down to 64 because the new screen I got um, I'm miss it's shifted by 32 bits so I'm going to start this area at the 32 pixel to the 64 pixel um, to shift it down by 32 bits <clears throat> and then here's how we create the row address and bit address for that and these are the ASCII values from the ASCII ROM for the for the corresponding values I want, so score, colon, and then digit 1 and digit 0 <clears throat> are going to be concatenated. So digit, it's going to count from, well, we can have 0 through 9, right? So that's a 4-bit value. Our ASCII ROM needs a 7-bit value. And so we can just, its they're all in this range of the... Um, of the ASCII ROM, so three, zero, three, one, three, whatever, three through nine. So we can just concatenate three, three bits onto the four bits that are the value. Um, and then same thing for the ball here. Um, three, two, one is only in, in this range here. So we can just concatenate the ball onto this um, two bit value with a five bit value makes seven bit value. So here's the logo region. We're gonna display the Pong when we're gonna blow this up. 64 by 128 it's going to be used as a background so we're going to scale it it's only three bit values so i'm using an octal value right here so um, this is how i lay out the word pong we have the rule region so we're going to outline the rules of the game in a in a section of the screen so this is how it's going to read from each uh, for each letter from the rom so this will be line one Line two, line three, line four, uh, the game over region. We'll see uh, game over and the counter will we'll make sure or the timer that for that will be two seconds. And then we're going to blow that up to 32 by 64. So it'll say game over. Um, here's the mux for the, the ROM addresses. 
I'm going to have an aqua colored background. And then so if score on, we're going to set the character address to the score, the row address to the score row, and the bit address to the score bit address. And then if we have an ASCII bit, then the text RGB will be red. So I'm going to show all those, the score in red, um, the ball in red, the rule on in red. The logo is going to be yellow, the big yellow um, pong in the middle of the screen. And then game over will also be in red. And then here's where it concatenate those four bits for the text on. It's just like a one hot or, yeah, because we can have the score on, the logo on, the rule on, or the over on. I just take all those signals and put them into one text on signal that I shift out. And then here's the uh, ROM interface where we concatenate the, whichever character address and whichever row address that we set up in here. And then we read the ASCII word and because it's, the pixels are counting up and then we want the, uh, the ROM to count the opposite way, we're gonna um, invert the, uh, the bit address. So here's the top module. Uh, we have the clock, the reset button, button D and button U, H-Sync, V-Sync, all the stuff for the VGA connector and the RGB. Here's the four states, new game uh, while we're playing, getting a new ball after you miss, and then the game over state, create a state register, wires to connect all the modules up, um, some registers here for driving the, the Pong text and Pong graph, <clears throat> actually just... Yeah, Pong graph to um, increment, decrement, or, or clear the, the score when it, um, for resetting the game. Here's just instantiating all the modules. Got the VGA controller, the text unit, the graph graphics unit. And then here's a 60 hertz timer tick. I just created at these pixels right here. Um, all the signals connecting there, the counter. And then here's a state machine. So when we reset, we're going to go to a new game state, and then otherwise we'll do this. Um, also controlling the RGB reg and RGB next for buffering the RGBs. And then here's the, uh, the state logic. So we're going to start with um, graphics still one because we're in new game. And then as we go through the state reg, we're going to set all the stuff up. So we're going to start with three balls. We're going to clear the score. And then if button is not um, zero zero meaning it's one zero or zero one meaning a button pressed then we will go to the play state and then we will decrement the ball register because you're taking one of your three balls to start the game with and then we go into the play state so now we're in an animated screen so we're turning off the still graphics signal and then if we have a hit we're going to increment the score and if we miss um, if the ball register is at zero that's game over otherwise you get a new ball and then um, we're going to start the timer um, for, for two seconds. And then you'll be able to start with your new ball. Once you hit the, the button, it'll just start going. Here's the new ball state. When the timer is up and then you hit a button, then you'll go to the play state and you'll start playing again. And then, like I said right here, if the ball register is zero after a miss, we'll go to the game over state. And then after two seconds, it'll go back to the new game state. It'll show game over and then back to the new game state. Um, and then here's the RTB multiplexing. Here's the, uh, so text on three is one of the on signals that's concatenated. Text on one, text on zero, text on two. They're all in here for multiplexing. So we have text RGB, graph RGB, um, another text RGB. And then otherwise we'll just have the aqua background and then here's the output for buffering the RGB reg. Um, here's the constraints file, clocks 100 megahertz coming in, uh, button zero is um, up, button one is down, and button R is reset, so uh, D, U, and R, the RGBs for the VGA connector, H-Sync and V-Sync. All right, now let me let me show you it working on the screen. Okay, so here's Pong on the screen. Um, this is the start screen. You see, we got it's it's backwards to you guys, but if you when you do this on your own, it'll be it'll be right. But you got the score, the ball count, the rules right here, and then the big Pong. Here's the top wall, the left wall, the bottom wall. 
Like I said, I got my screen is shifted 32 pixels, so I brought everything down so it'll fit. And so now once I press a button, the ball starts going, waits for two seconds, and every time I hit the paddle, I'll uh, register, increment the score, and then I'll just miss. So I'll show you what the, uh, and it says game over, and then it goes back to the uh, new screen. So like I said, you go into those modules and you can change the colors and make this look any way you want. And uh, so there you have it. There's Pong on uh, the basis three. Thanks for watching.